Good day everyone, I'm Josephine Manapsal from Francisco Osorio Integrated Senior High School. I was tasked to discuss the statistical analysis as part of data analysis. Let's start with the instruments used in quantitative data. In quantitative data, we use survey questionnaires, inventory scale, and the most commonly used which is the Likert's rating scale. Now, to establish its validity, we seek the consultancy of the expert to content validate our instrument. And then, we establish the internal consistency of the, it of the items by computing the Cronbach alpha. Now, this slide shows the value of Cronbach alpha and its equivalent verbal interpretation of internal consistency. 0.5 less is unacceptable. Less or equal than 0.5 to 0.6 is questionable. 0.6 or equal to 7 is acceptable, although it's very low. But this time, the researcher can use to admin the researcher can now use to administer such instrument. 0.7 less or equal to 8 is good and 0.8 equal or higher is excellent. The higher the alpha, the better. Now, here is another diagram showing about the different uh, or other statistical treatment to validate our instrument aside from Cronbach alpha one of which is the factor analysis. Factor analysis is a technique or a statistical technique that is used to reduce a large number of variables into fewer number of factors. So as you can see in the diagram, the items are deduced into fewer factors. Another is the confirmatory factor analysis. Once the factors are identified, the CFA or the confirmatory factor analysis is used to determine the factors and the factor loading of measured variables and to confirm what is expected on the basic or pre-established theory. This is the reason why it is difficult to develop a multidimensional instrument from scratch. So the most practical way for a researcher is to adapt or validate a reliable instrument and modify some of the items or some of the terms used to fit into our intended target population. I'm going to show you here the independent and the difference of the independent and the dependent samples. As shown in the diagram, there are two sets of circles. The first set of circles is consists of unpaired match or undistributed sample. That is why it is called independent sample. The next set of circle have, has, has match or has equal distribution of dots and that is why it is called a dependent sample. Why, what kind of T is it? In the, sample, in, in the single sample T, we have only one group that we want to test against a hypothetical mean. While the independent sample T, we have two means or two groups and they have no relation between these two groups. For example, the people who are randomly assigned to a single group. Now, a dependent T, we have two means, either the same people or in both groups or people are related. For example, husband and wife, left hand, right hand, hospital patient, and visitors. Okay, this, this, this diagram shows a statistical design which allows us to use a comparison of two groups or a comparison of three or more groups. Now, let's proceed first with the comparison of two groups. Now, the comparison of two groups is divided into two, the paired groups and the unpaired groups. 
Now, for the paired groups, we, this is also divided into two, the normal distribution parametric and the non-normal distribution non-parametric. Now, if you have the non-normal distribution parametric, you use the paired test. Again, paired test, sample test, or dependent T tests are the same. Now, for the non-normal distribution non-parametric, we use the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Again, we make use of the word parametric as discussed earlier by Sir Joffel. Non-parametric are, are outcome variable if it is interval and ratio. If it is non-parametric, if it is nominal and ordinal. Now, let's proceed with the unpaired groups. For the unpaired groups, again, it is divided into two. The normal distribution parametric and the non-normal distribution non-parametric. Now, for the normal distribution parametric, we use the unpaired, unpaired test or the independent t-test. Now, for the non-normal distribution non-parametric, we use the man with new test. Okay, now let's proceed with the comparison of three or more groups. Sometimes in a pretest or post test, they make use of treatment, treatment 1, treatment 2, treatment 3, or interventions. So we, if we want to compare three groups or three interventions, this is what we're going to use. You have the match group. The match group is divided into two. Again, you have the normal distribution parametric. We use the repeated measure ANOVA. Now, if you have the non-normal distribution non-parametric, use, we use the Friedman test. And then if you have the unmatched group, you mean undistributed uh, samples, you have the normal distribution, sorry, which is parametric. And then you also have, uh, if you have the non-normal distribution parametric, you use one-way or two-way ANOVA. Take note, two keys multiple range tests. You can use also Bonfen. Bon, you can also use uh, bon, Bonferroni correct, uh, correction test, Duncan's multiple range test, and also the last one, which is the non normal distribution, non parametric. We use the Cruz Wallis test. Okay, so in this diagram, there is a hypothetical yes-no questions here. Now, for example, are you using the relationship between variables? If yes, that is a correlational design. Now, there are two types of correlational design. The, if you are comparing two variables, that is by variate. And the other one is you are having multiple variables or multivariate. Now, if you have, if your answer is yes in two variables, that is the basic correlational design. If not, that is the predictive design. Again, if you're going to proceed with the relationship between uh, multiple variables or predictive relationship, if the answer is yes, you can also have a predictive design. And if, all, if also your answer is yes, it's either you, if you want to manipulate the independent variable, um, this is the, the, the showing uh, of difference. It is together with the group comparison. Amount. Now, let's proceed. If it is not a relationship at all, then it is a difference between group. If the answer is yes, is it a group comparison? So, if it is yes, you use a manipulative independent variable. If not, this is what we call the causal comparative design. If yes, you use the control group. If it is a control group, you have, I have both yes and both no. If it is 
if you are going to compare, if you're going to have a control group, if not, that is what we call the pre-experimental design. Now, if, if you're going to use control group and you're going to randomly design the participants, this, this is what we call the true experimental design. If not, this is what you call the, the quasi-experimental design. I hope with this illustration, it is now clear what statistical design we are going to use in our data analysis. Now, there are types of correlation coefficients. We have the most common correlation, which is the basic correlation, uh, the Pearson R and the Spearman correlation. Again, we use the Pearson if the data is interval and ratio. And the Spearman correlation is we have an ordinal and nominal data. Now, if you have both, I mean, if you have one is nominal and the other is uh, interval, we made use of point by serial correlation. Now, there is a rule of thumb for interpreting the size of a correlation coefficient. The size of correlation and the interpretation. 0.00 to 0.3 is a negligible correlation. By the way, you can see here a positive and an, a negative sign. So the correlation is between negative 1 to positive 1, if you're going to notice. So the highest is 1 and the lowest is negative 1. So the higher, the better. The higher the correlation, the stronger the correlation. Now, in the next illustration, as you will going to see here, there are a lot of statistics software, one of which is, is Megastat Statistica, but here the most convenient and the most commonly used by statistician, I guess, is the SPSS. Because it, in the SPSS, you can analyze the descriptive statistics and frequencies with a relevant, uh, uh, easier command like this, you can see in the box, you will just have to click statistics and you can click the mean if you want to have that, the standard deviation, the variances, if you want to include in your report. Same thing, you can have, you can analyze the variables and you need to paste it here in this box and again, you click OK, and continue. You can also use graphs, dialogues, and interactive box plot. So this is the beauty of SPSS. And uh, you can also click the frequencies, descriptive and analyze. And you can also have an illustration here. If you want to click, if you want to have the bar parts, you can have them. Just click OK, and here you will have the input. It is already and ready, it is readily available and interpreted by the software itself. So you don't have to put the table. Automatically, the table will come out. Now, you, if you use the syntax editor, click analyze descriptive statistics, then click, click sorry, the frequency. You can put the gender in the variable. This is the variable box. Then click charts, bar charts, and click continue. As you go along with this SPSS, as you master this, the, the better you can have your data analyzed and the more time you use for this software, the, the more you, you will master how to use the statistical uh, design in this software. So this software are available over the, over the internet and for a specific number of days. And uh, you can use this for your study. To explore the SPSS, you can also click the SPSS tutorial. And uh, 
the the instructions there are easy sometimes you can also youtube the the steps 